Uh, thank you, Alice, and thank you, Meg. Um, my part of the presentation uh, today is to talk about the biology of late blight and its pathogen, how you diagnose late blight, and then how we scout for it, how we find it out in the field. Okay, this is the culprit. Uh, this is the organism that causes, or microorganism that causes late blight. This is a microscope picture. It's about magnified about 200 times. Um, the fuzzy white stuff that you saw is partly this, these uh, strands that you're seeing, and also these little oval-shaped uh, sporangia. And uh, when I get to the life cycle in a moment, you'll be able to see a little more clearly uh, what these uh, sporangia are and what they can do. We used to call this a fungus. It looks like a fungus, but it's not really a fungus. This is called an oomycete pathogen, and it really is quite similar to algae, but without chlorophyll. Okay, so this is the, the disease cycle for late blight, and we'll put our attention over on the right-hand side of this uh, cartoon at this point. And remember, we talked about those sporangia. So here's a, a, a picture or a diagram of, of what a sporangium looks like. And essentially, the sporangium uh, has uh, two ways of causing infecting plants. So it may germinate with a, something called a germ tube, and that's the thing that's going to infect the plant. Or if it has good conditions for uh, zoospore production, which is free moisture, it will produce these swimming spores. And these swimming spores then and multiply the effects, so there'll be a dozen of them or 20 of them in a, in a sporangium. So they'll be released and you can get actually amplified the number of inoculation units that can end up on a plant. So whether it's the sporangium or the zoospores, they land on the plant and they can go down, percolate in the soil and get the crown and into the, the, the tubers of a potato at the top of tomatoes and they can get on the tomato any, any part of the top of the plant, fruit, stems, uh, leaves that can be infected, and potato is just about anything on the plant can be infected. So essentially what happens after the, uh, the uh, plant becomes infected, then uh, this mycelium moves all the way and it uses the, the nutrients that are inside the leaf and then uh, produces these what are called sporangiophores. They're essentially this little branch structure that produces those sporangia on the bottom side of the leaf. Now on the stem, they'll just be on the stem surface or on the fruits. Uh, they'll be on the fruit surface. But the interesting thing about this is it's a very highly evolved uh, uh, critter, I guess you might say, and it drops down these, uh, these sporangia forests, and the sporangia can then uh, be open and available t to the wind, to the breeze, to pick those things up and move them elsewhere, or droplets of water can move them. So then they will move to another, uh, another plant or a different part of the plant and can cause, uh, cause disease. Now, if these are on potatoes and they uh, the, potato, and the tubers are infected and the tubers are not harvested or they end up on a coal pile, we'll talk about that later, uh, they can survive in that uh, condition in association with living tissue over a plant, over a winter, for example. So if the, uh, if the potato doesn't freeze or isn't destroyed by some other means, it, that phytophthora can survive in there. And then when the germ, when the, the potato sprouts in the springtime, it may colonize, the, the phytophthora can colonize and produce those spores again, the sporangia, and again this cycle starts all over again. So that is uh, very important to understand that so that you can understand why we're talking about the way we suggest for control. Now this, uh, again, it's a very clever beast, this uh, phytophthora, because it has another means of, of over, uh, over a season uh, survival. And this is through us uh, another process. We have, if Phytophthora has two different mating types, we call them the A1 and A2 mating types. They live separately from each other, but if both of them are present in the same plant or uh, usually in the same plant, uh, they can uh, mate essentially and produce this thing called an oospore. And an oospore is a very resistant structure. It can, it, uh, it's impervious to a lot of environmental pluses, uh, highs and lows, and essentially can last in the soil for a a number of years, and when the time is right, it, it will uh, produce sporangia, and then that sporangium enters into the, to the disease cycle again. Now, I'll just mention that for uh, the United States growers, we basically don't commonly have those two mating types here, although they're beginning to show up, and I think Meg is going to mention that, that later. So what, at where we are right now is most of the time we don't believe we have this oospore phase 
uh, it's allowing overwintering. When that becomes, or if that becomes common, we'll hope it's an if, um, that can really change the way we're going to have to try to manage this disease. So that's the, the disease cycle. So let's talk now about symptoms. And we saw some pictures already, but the, and in fact, it, they're very similar to the ones that Meg showed, but this is a, these were done in Ohio and hers were in New York. You can see the very necrotic tissue. Now again, uh, I think I didn't mention, but it's very important that that uh, late blight is a, essentially a, a disease of cooler season or cooler uh, situations, although the, the uh, pathogen does not die if it gets hot and dry. It can still survive, particularly associated with stem tissue or fruit tissue or tubers. So um, it, uh, it likes to have very cool, have relatively cool temperatures, uh, high humidity and rainfall. So what will happen here, you see this brown dark tissue uh, that's dead, so that because phytophthora infestans is associated with living tissue, where you're going to find this, the, that mycelial mat you saw, and that white fuzzy stuff is going to be on the outside. So, and again, this is the top of the leaf, so I'll show you the bottom of the leaf in a moment. And this is just again showing you the kind of a devastation. You know, this could just be one sporangium that caused this this uh, big lesion here initiated, and this happened just in a few days as well. Similar, similarly, you'll see something like this on potato. Uh, again, it's, this is the back side of the potato, so this is where the sporulation is occurring in the uh, sporangia going to be seen. In tubers, uh, the, it, you'll see kind of a, a brown uh, necrosis, we call it, on the, on the tuber tissue, and eventually secondary bacteria and other things will come in there and totally rot. So these will essentially just melt away. Here are some more symptoms. This is a, a very... Uh, Unfortunately, becoming more uh, more has become more typical symptom is this stem stem lesion. Essentially, it's a dark brown to black color. If the humidity is high in the canopy, um, you may see this fuzzy white stuff. That's the the mycelia and those spores, sporangia of uh, late blight pathogen. So, but this is very typical the kind of uh, of lesion you'll see, and this kills the tissue all the way through the st the stem. And this, this is, turns out to be quite a, a good place for this to survive when the conditions, the phytophthora will survive there when the conditions are not optimal for it to sporulate. Here's just another picture on the right with the, showing the devastation you can get. Okay, now on fruit, uh, there's a pretty typical symptom on fruit. It's kind of a bronze color, although I'll show you in a moment there are some other things that will do this, but, but the color is it's quite bronzed, and uh, it can attack both uh, uh, green and red fruit. Uh, if, again, the conditions are right, you may also see this white sporulation uh, on the surface of the fruit. This is a good one. This was in a greenhouse, too, and it's a good example of the, the uh, stem lesions as well. You can see them here. Okay, so this again is what you'll see on the back side of the leaves, and this is very typical. And remember this because you're going to look for this when you're doing scouting, because that's a very good indication of, uh, of uh, that this is Phytophthora infestans. You'll look for this ring of, of, uh, of sort of a fuzzy white stuff, and that's the mycelium and the sporangia. And if you have a hand lens, you'll see something more like this, and you might be able to see that little branching uh, if uh, you have a very good hand lens. Uh, that will help you make the, di the, the diagnosis.